What's up guys? Today we're going to continue our adventures into Django because it's much more fun than writing my thesis. So today we'll go be going over um, how to do some like kind of fancy URI parsing and um, HTTP redirection and we're also going to go over how to implement uh, class-based views instead of instead of just our function-based views that we've been doing so far. So let's dive right into it. So just a little recap. Um, we, I've already been showing you guys how to uh, receive get requests, okay? We're basically, whenever uh, the default, when we go to our URL, we're going to be doing a get request. But I've shown you how to receive um, parameters with your get request by uh, just routing to a URL like you would normally. Like, say, just route to names here, okay? And send that to a view. And then in your view, you're going to access, your through this HTTP request object, you're going to access the get um, query dictionary and just use it like a standard dictionary in Python and just assuming that there's some sort of name parameter that's been supplied um, we'll try and get name and we'll give it a default value like no name um, right here and uh, this also we do the same thing with like an age we can assume that there's been just an age value um, supplied and then what maybe we'll do some work with that like we'll say well We'll have a default response if the name is in particular Jimmy, and um, if the age is zero, then we'll assume that like, oh, we just didn't get an age, and we'll just say something about that person, their name, or um, if both those things pass, then we'll assume, oh, there is a name and an age, and we'll do something with both the name and the age, okay? So the standard of syntax we would use for this is, is a query string uh, format. So this, this is the syntax where, so like I was saying, you, you just assume this, URL um, names, and then beyond that, you assume that there's gonna be like a question mark and somebody's going to supply key value pairs uh, with key equals some value separated by an ampersand, okay? So uh, one thing about the syntax is it's not like great and also it pushes a lot of work into your view here and you have to like fiddle around with like dictionaries and stuff like that. Um, so the Django has a bit of a better syntax for basically accomplishing the same thing with get requests where you could just capture values from a URL um, via these um, pointy brace syntax where you could you could even specify a type. The default if you if you just specify like say like name inside these curly braces, then it's going to default to this string type. Um, and so, so you could use this syntax, curly brace, and specify a name, and give it a view. And then in our view, we could automatically assume that there's an extra parameter provided to our view, like name. So, see for instance, um, with Jimmy, I didn't, I didn't do anything. This is just a normal view that we've seen so far. So, in our views here, I pass it to Jimmy view, and my um, view function just takes a request. But on the other hand, in this names path um, with a name after it uh, that isn't Jimmy, okay, so I put Jimmy here first, so it'll match Jimmy if there's if it's here first. But if the name isn't Jimmy, if it's anything else um, than Jimmy that's a non-empty string, then I'm going to get, because I specify name here, I'm going to get an extra parameter name that I can work with in my view, okay? And similarly, I can continue from there and extend that and add something like an int parameter with an age that I'll then also have access to with my view as a parameter in my view. So the general um, syntax for this is just going to be um, pointy braces, the type, colon, whatever you want your your parameter to be named. And uh, if you don't specify the type, it just defaults to str, okay, which is going to be any non-empty string until a slash, okay? You can also specify that it needs to be an int or a slug, which is um, kind of a less general str, which is any um, ASCII word character in particular, or hyphen or underscore scores, or there's a UUID format, or neatly enough, there's also a path format. So if we want to play around with this a little bit, let's go and let's go to our Django templates. 
which I already have cloned, my Django template rebuilt. And I've set up a new project for us, fancy URLs here, okay? So uh, let's activate our Django environment, conda activate. Okay, and in our URLs project, let's, let's, let's take a look at our URLs project. So um, if, I, if I go into fancy URLs, I have an app here, start, and we can work from this start app and basically try and arrive at this done app, okay? Um, and you'll just notice, I'll, I'll open up the project-wide URLs.py first. So everything in the start app is gonna be mapped from e slash Mac ID slash start. Okay, and we'll go to start URLs. So let's go to start URLs and let's see what we got going on to start off with. Okay, so to start off with, I already gave us a path here um, that goes from names and it takes a string name and it sends it to views name view. So let's give our views an open now, views. And our name view is gonna take a request and it's gonna take advantage of this capture parameter um, name here. And it's gonna put name is real a-hole. So let, let's give that a try. So let's run our server. Whoops. Ah. There we go. Let's run our server and let's go to e slash Mac ID. So localhost, I'm running it on e slash Mac ID slash start slash names and I'll give it the name Curtis. Curtis is a real AO. Why did I pick Curtis? Why did I pick my own name? That was a stupid idea. Okay, so um, this is a standard view right here. Let's extend it a little bit. Let's 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 include an H. So let's go path names and we'll keep working off name here. And now we'll give it an int age and we'll go to views dot name age view. Okay, so for this to work, let's Take a function just like this. It'll be name, age view. And now we get an extra parameter, age, okay? And age is automatically gonna be an int for us. So if I'm gonna include it in here, so I'll change this message to say something about my name, about my age is, and I'll convert that string to an int plus years old. Okay, so let's give this a try. So now I'm gonna go to names, Curtis, and now I'm gonna specify an age, 43 here. Oh, other way around. We're not taking a string and converting it into an int, we're taking an int and converting it into a string. There we go, Curtis is 43 years old. And now let's actually give it a try. Let's say we don't put an int here. Let's say I just put some nonsense here. Now you'll see if I don't put an int here, it isn't able to match this URL. And I get the standard 404 like not found as if there's just no URL corresponding to what I put in here. Okay, and um, before we move on actually, one more interesting thing we might want to do is define a default path. So I'll, I'll use uh, my name Jimmy before, okay? So this is a path that if I didn't put this path in front of this path, okay, it would match first. So this is something important to note. Um, if I didn't, if I put this path underneath this path, it would never get matched because Jimmy would totally get matched by the str um, type. But since I put it beforehand, I can make kind of an ad hoc path, views.jimmy view, okay, to handle Jimmy. So maybe I just, I really like Jimmy, so I don't want to call Jimmy an a-hole. So I'll put it up here. And I'll have J 
Jimmy view, and I'll say, well, Jimmy, and I don't take any parameter now. I'll just say straight up, Jimmy is an RA guy. Okay, now I can go back and let's route to just names Jimmy. Oh, I have an error. So this isn't working right now because I have a syntax error. And the syntax error is because There we go. And now let's reload. And now we see that Jimmy is an all right guy. Okay, so th this is that's a useful way to, um, or useful alternative to the query string um, format for doing get requests. Uh, we, could, we could do even more interesting um, URL captures, but to do that, we're gonna have to go over regular expressions a bit. So I'm not going to go over this too in depth because we've already gone over regular expressions in this course um, in the context of bash. Um, so regular expressions, I'm going to assume you already kind of have an idea what they are. And I'll just talk about, I'll, I'll give a quick refresher for and how they work in Python. So um, regular expressions, I'm going, to ex um, I'm going to write a string and I'm going to use a variety of matter, uh, meta characters to um, specify a pattern of other strings that could match to this, okay? And some of these meta characters, so here's, here's a um, basically complete list of them. Um, so some of these meta characters are gonna be stuff like the dot, which will just match any other single character. The caret will be um, anything that comes after it will have to begin at the beginning of the line, okay? It's gonna specify this begins at the beginning. The dollar sign, anything that comes before it, you're specifying this is the end of the, of the line now. Um, star, anything that precedes star will be, um, it'll match to a sequence of zero or more of those things. And plus is the same thing, but it has to be one or more. Question mark is an optional. Anything that precedes it is optional. Um, these curly braces, you can be able to use them to specify, they're kind of like star and plus, but you could specify the exact amount that they want to repeat. Uh, the square brackets are going to be used for select one. The backslash is one of the most important characters because if you ever need to write one of these characters or any other special character, meta character here, um, you need to put a backslash before it. Um, otherwise, it's not going to be, it's going to be used for its special purpose instead of as a literal character. The um, vertical bar is going to be able to alternate examples and um, brackets will be able to group things together. So I recommend just kind of like reading um, the Python docs like reference, like the, the Python docs actually um, are pretty pretty good um, for, for as a reference. I also recommend whenever you're specifying the pattern in a string um, to use um, R string prefixes for raw strings. Um, uh, this is a feature you get in Python 3 that I recommend you take advantage of. If you don't do that, then when you use like backslash, you're going to have to double backslash it um, because characters will be escaped if it's not in a raw string. So I recommend just always putting R as a prefix. And it's oddly fitting because we're doing regular expressions anyways, right? And that's actually not what it stands for. It doesn't have anything to do with regular expressions. It has to do with raw strings, but still nicely fitting. So if we want to play around with this, I'm actually going to introduce something um, that I haven't introduced before. I'm going to go to my terminal. I'm going to stop the server right now. I'll actually move this up so we can see it better. And I'm going to um, run python manage.py and I'm going to run a new command, shell. And what this is going to do, this is actually going to open up a interactive shell that we can like play around with and it will have access to everything that our Django project has access to when we play around with this. So it's actually going to be pretty cool. So if we want to play around with regular expressions, we should import the re module, okay, the re for regular expression module, okay, 
and um, we'll, we'll play around with them uh, using the kind of the standard regular expression object and then I'll show you how to use them in a particular way to Django in a bit. Okay, so j just to give an example of some of the things I went over before. So the way regular expressions work is um, you compile an expression to match to and then you there's a variety of different functions you could use. One of the most one of the more interesting ones um, for this example is you give a string um, with a bunch of things in it and it'll find all the things separated by spaces um, that match uh, the, this regular expression. So if I do something like reg equals re dot um, compile, which one was I going to do? So I'll r prefix my string to make sure it's raw. And I'll say, um, let's find uh, a, b, c, any, any, any strings um, with these characters, um, a, b, c will match to, right? And now we can do something like reg find all, and I can give it a, c, d, e, f, B. Okay, and you'll see that it only finds A, B, C here. Okay, a bit more of an interesting example. We could do something like A to Z. We could use a hyphen inside these square brackets um, to specify a range of characters. And then if we do plus here, we're basically saying, okay, find any, um, select any sequence of characters that is only made up of A to Z characters, right? So now if I try something like reg find all, hello, goodbye, C sharp, 1500, something one, right? Um, whoops, ah, oh, darn. We'll leave it to this. Whoops, what did it have trouble with? Oh, I'm, I'm using this wrong way. I want to do reg dot find all. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, so then now it's going to take something like hello, goodbye, right? But not match 1500, C sharp. Okay. Um, so there's plenty more examples uh, like this. So if you do um, R um, A dot C here, okay, that's going to do, so we try um, reg equals, here I'll clear this, reg equals read dot compile a dot C. So the dot matches any single character. It's a wild card for any single character. So now if I do reg dot find all, A, B, C, A, D, C, A dot C even, right? Matches all of those. Now this is a good point, chance to point out what the um, backslash does. Like, so let, let's say I literally want to specify dot here. Like I literally just want to find the pattern A dot C. Then I can put a backslash here. Now doing the same find all, now it only finds a dot C, right? So this is a good example. So I could, I could escape any of these other special characters if I want to find in particular that, that special character. And if I want to find a slash, I could always use just a double backslash. Okay, uh, another interesting one, alternate. Okay, I can alternate between characters uh, so I can do A, B, or A, D and find either or of these characters. Uh, I can use, um, th this is a good example of both using the brackets and the um, exclamation mark. So the exclamation mark makes the preceding thing optional. If I did this without the brackets, it would just make um, the T optional. Okay, by bracketing, I'm saying make E, D optional. Uh, so th this way, if I do car and carrot, it'll match to both. 
these uh, curly braces. They're kind of like the plus or times, okay, but they specify a specific amount. So, so I'm saying repeat A or B three times. So it'll match to anything that repeats A or B three times. Any sequence like that. Okay, and then just some other um, special characters uh, that save us a bit of time. These could be recreated in different ways, but this will match to any word char, this slash W, okay? Uh, slash D will match to any decimal char, and slash S will match to any white space char. So both, all three of these are quite useful. If you want a more complete list, like I was saying, please reference the Python um, documentation. Um, the like regular expressions as a whole are a very big thing. So a lot of times, like while building a regular expression, you're gonna just want to reference um, the uh, documentation, unless you're literally building regular expressions all the time and, and you become a pro at it. Okay, so why do we care about regular expressions? Um, what does this have to do with our lecture for today? So we could use regular expressions to um, route, capture capture different more. Um, complicated URLs than just saying like a string or an int or something like that. We can constrain our URLs further than that and use it to capture values from those URLs. Now, uh, there's going to be a little bit of extra complication here. What we want to do is we want to, um, in our URLs, we're going to, anytime we want to use a regular expression, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to enclose the whole thing in brackets. And then we start it with question mark P then just like before, we specify in pointy brackets the parameter that we want to capture to, okay? And this time we don't put a type because we're gonna have to default to string. Now, if you wanna if you want to convert it into an int or something like that, it'll be no problem because you can do something like this where you use a regular expression that constrains it to being something that we know we could convert to int afterwards. Yeah, we could easily convert to int in our view afterwards. Okay, so the general syntax here is going to be um, we're going to we're going to provide a path. We're going to start our path with a caret to mean so this hat symbol to mean um, this is going to be the start, and we're going to end it with a dollar sign. Okay, and then we're going to write whatever path we want, and whenever we want to capture something using regular expressions, we'll put it in brackets with this exclamation mark p and the parameter in pointy braces that we want to capture. And then we just specify whatever regular expression we want afterwards. Okay, so the example here is, let's recreate this now. Okay, so instead of names, we'll do um, lab path, and we'll put rejects here instead of names. And we're, let's, let's accomplish the same thing, same thing we want to accomplish. Oh, before we do that, we're not going to want to use path. We need to use a special path, repath, okay? And we could import it from the same place, the django.urls. So go to django.urls and we'll import repath, okay? And we'll, we'll make sure to use repath here. Re underscore path, okay? So we'll begin our... Um, We'll begin our string, we'll, pre we'll prefix it with R, and we'll begin it with a caret, and we'll specify rejects, and then we're gonna wanna capture a name here. So, braces, question mark P, okay, capital P, pointy braces, name. Okay, so the parameter we're gonna wanna capture it as is name. So when we write our view, we're gonna have a name parameter. And now we specify the regular expression for our name. And so a name, we could just say, well, any um, sequence of characters that's at least one character um, composed from A to let's say Z will be a valid name. Okay, so this is our regular expression that we're capturing to here. Okay, so we'll use that regular expression to capture the name. And then we'll use, we'll have another regular expression here for age, okay? And the regular expression, the way this will work is we'll, we'll use digits zero to nine. 
and we'll constrain it to be um, two digits. Okay, so this is this is like like plus means one or more any sequence of one or more repeated of you know any character from A to Z. This is specifying any character from zero to nine two times exactly two times so if you're gonna if your age is if you're less than 10 years old you're gonna have to put right zero nine or something like that right and then let's end this with a slash and a dollar sign to represent end of the line okay and now we'll pass this to our views we'll do views dot we'll just call this one rejects view Okay, so let's go back here and um, we can really copy this because it's going to be basically the same thing. Um, we'll delete this rejects view. Yeah. And we're going to take a name because we specified name here and an age because we specified age here parameter. And we'll do the same thing. We'll just add rejects style at the end to show, to show that we're doing something different. That we, know, we know we're not getting the same view. All right, so let's go back. Um, we still have our interpreter here. Let's let's exit out of that. Okay, by using exit, just like how we exit out of any Python interpreter, the exit function, and let's run our server. Okay, no errors. So um, we're gonna go to rejects name age okay so instead of names here we'll go rejects um, we'll give it jimmy again and we'll give jimmy age 50. nice and now you see now now we've constrained our age further so like yeah like i was saying before if i'm five years old and i'm trying to go this side and i put just five nah, nah, nah it doesn't like that so th this doesn't fit this reject so as far as it's concerned it just didn't find any path matching this and it gives me a 404 not found so i'm gonna have to do something like 05 now to get through it okay and like i was supposed to before oh the one difference is now i'm doing um string age and um i don't need to do that it's already a string Okay, so that's using um, regular expressions for paths. So this, this is a really powerful mechanism um, for, for routing um, different paths in your app. You, you can constrain to be like, I want this type of, um, of data to be provided in my get URL. So it, it's, it'll make things, doing things this way, it, I, I find is a much cleaner than doing um, query strings and then in your views, going through a bunch of work, um, parsing the string. And then you would have to probably, you could do the same thing where it's, you take a query string and in your view, you do the regular expression manually. But why do that when you have this repath function uh, that Django already gives you? Okay, uh, so uh, that that's how to do some more complicated URL routing. Uh, so one other thing we wanted to be able to do is we wanna be able to reference our URLs in a nice way, particularly if they change a bit, but like they're pointing to the same view. So we might go back into our app and maybe actually change the path, okay? Maybe we change the original path of the app or something like that. We might change the path around a bit, but it's still referencing the same view. And um, we might, in our templates somewhere, reference this path. And this is, this is gonna be an annoying thing. So in your, in your HTML code, you might like have some template with an href or something like that and that href you're going to is going to reference a certain path but then you change it on your server so then you have to go through your templates and find where you reference that path and change it back so to avoid this what we can do is we can name our url paths okay so um i'm going to create a path okay uh for serving i'm going to call it we can do the same thing with repath that I just showed you, but I'm going to go back to just using path because um, it's not necessary to use repath at the moment. So I'm going to go to path and I'm going to create a path 
index, okay? And index um, is going to be, I'm gonna send it to my index view, and this time I'll give it a name to reference by, index, okay? So keep in mind the name of my app here. You don't need to write this up here, but just for reference, app name equals start. So keep in mind this is the name of my app here. Um, so I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna add a function. Uh, so first of all, I'm gonna import render to Django dot shortcuts import render. Um, do I have Okay, I'm gonna import render um, because what I'm gonna do is for my index view, I'm going to return a template. So I'm gonna do return render request index.pjhtml. Okay, so let's go back. Um, oh, and I wanna call this index view. This is kind of the nice thing about leaving your server running open because it was just telling me like, oh, there's no index, right? Like I can read the errors like while I'm working. So index view um, is going to render my template index. So well, now I'm gonna stop my server so I can create, I'm gonna to go to my start app and I'm gonna make a new directory templates inside here. And I'm gonna add inside templates a index.tj html. Okay. Um, and before I work on that, let's just add another view. Let's add another view. What did I use my example here? I had another view, um, hello here. I had another two views here. Let's add both of these. Now I'm just copying them to save a bit of time for us guys. Okay. Okay, so um, let's send this view. So let's define a hello view. And that hello view, let's just have it send back hello. Hello. And then my goodbye view. This view is going to take a parameter count, which is going to be an int. And let's return goodbye. And we'll show count here. So we'll say goodbye to however many times that the user wants us to say goodbye here for. Okay, and um, I just created this view so that I have something to reference from my template. Okay, so um, these both have names now, hello and goodbye, and they're under the start app here, okay? So now I can create a template that references um, these, that has like an href uh, that references um, these views via a URL, okay? And to do that, I use this URL pragma and I specify with the app colon the name that I want to route to. So I can actually just take this and copy it, okay? And so let's open up. So it'll be in start templates index.tghtml. And let's paste it in here. Okay, so, um, so my index view, it's going to serve this HTML. So let's give that a try. Let's run our server. Oops, I'm not in the right directory. Need to make sure I'm inside the manage.py directory. Let's run our server. Okay, 
And this time we're gonna to go to index. So we can go all the way to start and we're gonna to go to index. Okay, so we got our simple web page, and it's got um, these links that we set up. Okay, um, hello, um, goodbye. Okay, um, so if I click go to hello view, it sends me to this hello view, right? If I click go to goodbye view, it sends me to the goodbye view. Now, the, the interesting th thing to note about the goodbye view is that I can specify parameters. So goodbye takes a parameter here. So I'm specifying this URL and I know that it takes a parameter um, that's done with this capture, okay? And I can specify the parameter just by um, separating by a space and giving it the parameter inside of this pragma. Okay, so that's really cool functionality and it's really good practice to do. Um, because if you're like hard coding URLs here, and like I was saying before, things change around, it's it's likely to be something that that breaks inside your app. So it's it's a good separation of concern, okay, of concerns. That's always a good um, engineering principle. Okay, um, so another interesting thing we might want to do uh, with with our names here, when now that we have named URLs, is we could also um, look up a URL rather than hard coding a URL if we need to reference a URL on the server side. Okay, so not just on the client side in our templates. Uh, so uh, what's a, a situation we might, mind, we might want to do this in is if we do a um, HTTP response redirect here. Okay, so uh, let's say, let's set up a, a view and um, let's say an instance of something we might want to do similar to this is we can set up a review a view, and we'll call this view goodbye 1000 All right and this view um, will be the same as goodbye view i'll call this reverse view because it's going to do a reverse um, name equals reverse And I'll go and I'll define def reverse view request, and this and this doesn't take any um, any parameter to it or anything. And what I'll do is I'll define a count um, here, one thousand, statically, and I will redirect to the goodbye view and automatically give it that one that one thousand that count of one thousand. Okay, so this way I can save a bit of code. Um, so I have a bit of an error going on. Can I save? Oh, I just needed to save. Uh, do I have access to this reverse function? I don't think so. I think that's going to cause me an error. I need to re I need to import reverse from Django.urls. Otherwise going to cause me an error when I stumble upon it. Import reverse. Okay, so reverse is basically going to do the work of looking up what the correct URL is from the URL name. Okay, so now I can go um, instead of just goodbye and go to goodbye 1000. happening here. No, this needs to be start. Okay, and I got a, oh, HTTP response redirect is not defined. I remember to import reverse, but I didn't remember to import HTTP response redirect. So HTTP response redirect we get from Django.http module, the same as HTTP response. So let's import that as well. Response redirect. And now let's reload. And there we go. Goodbye 1000 times. And you'll see that when I actually went to that, it just redirected like the URL that I'm actually at is this URL.
Okay, while I'm talking about importing different HTTP responses, I should be I should bring up the HTTP response not found. Uh, this will be useful for when we do database operations next week. Uh, th this this often happens. We see this all the time um, already. So we we actually just saw it when we when I enter in a bad URL. So I'll just give you an example. Blah, blah, blah. Anything it finds, it, it it this is the default. HTTP response default 404, the not found response that Django will serve. Um, uh, you, you probably want to overwrite this at some point, but what, what you can do is you could you could manually send somebody to this page if you fail to say look up something in the database or something. If you if you have some issue where it's like you're doing some operation on the server side and you can't find some resource, um, you could manually send somebody to this page. Okay, so so far in this course, we've been using uh, function-based views, uh, and it, it, at, at a, certain, a lot of the time, you get away with that, it's fine. Uh, I'm gonna introduce you now to class-based views, uh, which give us a bit of extra functionality, and it's gonna, it's gonna help when we have more complicated views coming on later, because you can take advantage of things like inheritance uh, to get a bunch of like predefined functionality already built in. Uh, so a class-based view, the basic way it's going to work is you can take a, um, you, you define a class, whatever you want to call it, okay, and you import from, or, or let's say you inherit, sorry, from a parent class view, okay? So every, every class-based view is going to have view as a parent. It might it might have it as like a grandparent, but it'll have it as as um, it, it will uh, at some point have inherited from the view class. So um, an example, this isn't the only attribute you can set uh, to view, but example of an attribute you can set is the HTTP method names. So you give it a list of valid types of HTTP requests that are allowed to be called on this view. So let's say you want to restrict the view to get requests, you could put just a singleton list of get. Okay, if you want to do get and post, you can add post to this list. Okay, and then you define um, how it responds to um, these gets or posts. Okay, so I can define my method def get, and this is going to respond to um, HTTP get request largely the same um, as you would just write the view function that we always have. Okay, uh, the only difference is now it's going to take self as an argument. And um, it's a good idea to just give it the, the list of args or keyword args, okay, to now reference um, any arguments you think might be given to the um, view via the capture method that I've just shown you. So in this view, I'm gonna assume that um, this view gets routed to from a path that captures a name, okay? And to use the class as a, as a view now, the path still has to take a function. So what we need to do is we need to give it hello view dot as view. All right. So if we actually um, ex exit out of this project, I've defined a separate project for working with these views called class views here, okay? And we could open up um, start here. So in class views start urls.py. Doesn't want to kill my window. So in class views, start your else.py. There we go. And in class views, start views.py. We see how this works. It's already kind of set up for you. Um, so if we run this app, so now we're in the class views app, okay? So in Python, manage run server. 
Okay, and it'll go to basically the same URLs before, but now slash hello slash a name. Okay, so we go to e slash mac id slash start slash hello, and I'll give it my name, Curtis. There we go. Now it's serving Curtis, okay, but it's serving it through a class based view. Okay, so we define our class, we define our method. Okay, that will work just like the view functions we've always been defining, but for get requests, do def get. Okay, we do the same thing if we do a def post to respond to post requests. And we'll have a hello view dot as view. So we import from views, we import our class, and if we do dot as view in our path, it'll create a function, okay, that um, our, this path can route to. So we can already get a bit more interesting with this um, by defining um, a class that inherits now from template view, which in turn it inherits from view. And this class will be used in particular just for serving uh, templates. So th this class, uh, when, when we want a view that just serves a template, let's say, um, it could also respond um, to certain requests, but if, if, if you primarily you should be using this to just serve a template, then we could create a class and have template view. And what we do is in order to serve the, the template now, instead of using our render function, we just set the attribute of te for template name. And then we define a get context to set what our context dictionary will be. So, um, and you, you automatically, you kind of ignore this for now, but whenever you define a um, method like this, you want to first define its, um, call its super, okay? So to, to do this, let's copy some of this. Okay, so we can take this, add this to the top of our imports here. Okay, so what is this saying? This saying it's gonna it's gonna serve an index.gj HTML and it's gonna serve it with a context dictionary that's gonna have a name, okay? And the name is gonna come from a keyword name given to this view. Okay, so we're good. we're actually gonna use this view just as before. So let's go to our URL patterns, let's import this view. Index page view. We're gonna specify a path, okay. This path is going to be index and it's going to take a name. We'll use the slug for name. And um, we could do the same thing with a rejects, okay? Um, it, it won't make a difference. But for simplicity's sakes, right now, we'll use just a standard path. And now we'll have index view, index page view dot as view. And we'll give it a name to keep track of index view. Okay, and now we just need a index.gghtml to actually serve. So let's let's create that. Just a reminder about how to do this. We should go into our start app, into our app, make a new directory templates. Okay, make a file templates index.gghtml. And then let's open up that file. And we'll just make a simple HTML document. Oh, come on, we should auto complete that. Body. Okay, and I'll literally just do nothing here, but H1. Testing, index, or testing, template, class. Okay, so now if I run the server, okay, everything seems to be fine. So I should be able to go to index, give it a name. Um, oh, I should make use of the name here. With name, and remember how we use variables given by the context. So just to remind us what, what is the context here open up our views.py 
So the context, it has a name here, okay? Name. Okay, um, so now we go to index Curtis. Okay, so consider consider what we just accomplished here. Um, we gave a name to our URL, okay? And now we're rendering that name inside of our template, okay? So the name, as we change this, it'll render into the template. So we're providing it through context, okay? And through a class like this, that we can, if we want to extend upon this class, we can we can inherit from this class now, this index page view and extend upon it. And it'll already have the template name and stuff there. Pretty cool stuff. Okay, um, another interesting thing we could do, we could define a redirection class. Okay, so uh, we could define, if we inherit from this redirection, re or redirect view, um, all we need to do is specify an attribute pattern name. And then um, you could basically, ignore this stuff. This is just some like boilerplate that you could then leave the same. Okay. And whatever, whatever pattern you want to redirect to, you just specify it here and it'll redirect there. So, um, let's do an example of that. So let's say I go back to, yeah, we can close this template already. So we define this go to index view, and this will basically be a way, see, I, I just find pattern name here, and we have index view here. Um, so this will basically be a way of just sending me to index view, uh, yeah, with, with some default. So I could just define, um, so I need to import redirect view from the same place, this django.views.generic.face here. Okay. And now I can define path, also index, let's call it. And then it also takes a name. And now we'll go to go to, oh, we need to import. Go to index view. Go to index view dot as view. We'll do that name as well. Go to view. Okay, saving. Everything seems fine. So now I'll go to also index Jimbo. So this is an error because also index slug name. Oh, I forgot a pointy brace. I didn't properly finish here. There we go. And now it's reserving Jimbo. So I could also do redirection. I could just use the base redirect view itself to just redirect to a static URL like this. So like, let's say I wanted to find, um, I wanted a page that just kind of redirected me to Google from my website. I could just define something like this. Um, whoops, just to find something like this. Okay. That just uses the base redirect view that I'll import, um, from the same spot. Okay. But I don't want to import these things. I want to import redirect view. Okay. And now I'll have a go to Google. Google. And it literally 
it just redirects me to Google. Okay, so um, next week we're going to start um, database functionality. Uh, have fun, guys.